Hello, welcome to the ninth episode of Road to CTA. This time a very advanced topic. How to solve the scenario actually in time. This is a topic where many people struggle because you only have three or three and a half hours um, to solve the whole CTA scenario, which is not that much. It's doable, but it needs some strategies and a lot of practice to get it actually done. It's a standardized test, the Ravi board. This is the good news. So we can standardize a lot. And the second is practice makes quick. This is something I learned from um, speedrunners and computer games. I watch them, I like to watch them and they're really enjoyable and they say all the same, put in the grind, practice, practice, practice. And today we wanna talk about what you can practice and how you can become faster along the way this time. This is a very advanced concept. Please find your own way. I'm not a judge, I'm not a solve all situation, but please find your own way. And it's very important. You have already some experience doing mock exams, about 15 to 20 mock exams at least um, you should have um, done in order to be able to apply these advanced topics. So please don't just go about it when you do your first mocks. The first mocks will be completely different, completely out of time. This is an advanced topic. To get this out, now we have this out of the way. Again, I wanna share my love for Refugee Force. Some of you might already know. Refugee Force is a Dutch non-for-profit which trains refugees on Salesforce. And as, as we all know, getting your first Salesforce job is really tough. Therefore, please, if you have the possibility, go out, go to refugeeforce.com and hire a refugee today. And if you can't hire a refugee today, go ahead and donate some money. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first one is standardize your PowerPoint content. You can already create headlines and placeholder content for most slide. The first is the actors and licenses set. I don't say you have to fill out the actors and licenses themselves, but you can already create the slide, create the headline, create the table. The table is always four columns as far as I remember and like six to nine rows. So practice, tuk, 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 get it done. Second is role hierarchy, the same again. Either you draw it or you do it in PowerPoint, but you also already can start to prepare the slide. System landscape, this is a very standardized slide. I don't say you can always apply the same list system landscape to every scenario, but there's some commonalities which you can prepare ahead of time and can practice becoming fast. Same is true for data model. There's just some stuff which you can standardize and governance and delivery. This is also a highly standardized part of your um, the PowerPoint. Make sure you practice drawing and creating that slide for the data model. There is so much you can standardize. You can standardize where are my account and context objects? Where are my lead objects if applicable? Where are my tasks, my fields? How do I draw the errors? If you do it per hand or if you draw it in PowerPoint, in both cases, you can practice. Where do I put my cases? Where do I put my opportunities? How do I draw my opportunity, my products, my product line items, my quote line items? How do I draw the CPQ data model if needed? How do I draw the field service lighting data model if needed? How do I do all these little details? Practice, practice, practice. Make sure you practice. Where do I put my OWD? How do I calculate my volumes? Not the content itself, but how you actually do it. You would be surprised how often I have been drawing my data models for weeks, every morning, nothing else but system landscape data model, drawing again and again and again and again. It's really boring. It's the grind, but this grind makes you faster. And therefore, this is a default system landscape. This is not the, the perfect system landscape for any scenario by no stretch of the imagination, but it already contains a lot of components which apply for a lot of scenarios. Not, I don't say about my personal review board experiences, but this is if you take the public available review board scenarios and you condense it, you have some commonalities between all of them. Don't say it's always there, but I found it easier to actually add something and delete later than to always think. And you always have a Salesforce. Of course, we are in Salesforce. You always have something like a sales cloud or a service cloud, something along that way. There's very often something like communities. There's very often something like a BI tool, like Tableau CRM or Einstein Analytics, whatever you go for. There's often something, a document generation, a digital signature tool. You 
always have a firewall. You always have an ESP or an ETL. And what I just talked is not only applicable for the review board, but I think for all of our projects, we always have some app exchange apps. We all have, have some, some ERP system in the backend, which we have to connect. We almost always have some kind of data warehouse. There's almost always some kind of existing CRM we have to replace. And using that, I, um, I created a default system landscape for myself, which I have been practicing over and over and over again to draw on the top. And I always draw it the same way. So look in on the right top right. Ident uh, uh, single sign on solutions on the bottom right. Um, ESP on the right, ETL on the left. Third party systems on the right side. A website and additional um, third party apps on the left side. And with that, you already get a 60% solution out of way. It's kind of funny, but it's, it helps a lot to free up a lot of mental space and to become faster. And this brings me to the standardized solutioning. I like timelines. This is my personal timeline. You have to find your own. But I found, again, advanced. This is not something I did when I started out preparing for the CTA. This is something I did for the last three to six months. First read through, I do a rough skimming, no solutioning, no notes. I have the solution, the scenario sink in. I do this in like 10 minutes, super quick. Don't not stop reading, do, 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 do. go over it. And then I create a PowerPoint defaults. I create all the slides. I create, um, you know, my data model default, my system landscape default, my role hierarchy default, my, um, and while I do that, which takes me another 15 to 20 minutes, I let the scenario sink in, you know, because I have been practicing the drawing and the creating so often, I can actually, my brain continues to work. My brain, you know, works on the scenario. And the good news is you could kind of have 60% of the solution. It's not that you're close to passing, but you already got the rough outline. You already have a good feeling. Yes, there is something there. And then on the second read through, I actually do the solutioning. I do highlighting, solutioning, note taking, um, drawing as I go, line by line. Um, more to that later. This is the bulk of the effort. This is about two hours. And I am not native. I got 30 minutes extra. Um, I don't know if this still applies. Please always check latest documentation with Salesforce. Um, at the end, my brain is just fried. So at the end, I do clean up, but no reading. I clean up my PowerPoint slide. You know, they're kind of messy when I, um, you know, there's some stuff missing, some errors are missing, some stuff is not written properly. The last 30 minutes is really for cleaning up, especially since I know my brain is fried. I can't trust my brain anymore after like two, three hours. And if I still have time, I draw the SSO flow. This is just something, if you still have a couple of minutes over, just get it out of the way, draw one of the SSO flows. And in order to become faster, especially on the on this, create short tens and default solutions. For example, you very often use something like an integration to the EAP system via the remote process invocation um, and request and reply pattern using REST, which becomes in my notes, RPI, RR, REST. And for, or in order to get a leads from the website via a form, I consider 500 leads per day limit, but which becomes web to, uh, V2L 500. So I created short ends for a lot of recurring requirements or recurring solutions, recurring notes. And this makes the typing faster. And the ICD pipeline, I created um, a whole default solution which works. I, of course, have to adopt to the requirement of the scenario at hand, but there is something very similar across all the requirements. And since we, this is the drawing value solution, this is what takes a lot of practice. First, I start, I have defaults for individual elements. So I always draw the object in a system or the or as element in a system landscape the same way, always exactly the same way. I can draw that blindly. So I do it in PowerPoint, but if you do it by hand, you also should be able to draw it complete, literally blindly. Close your eyes and do it. I copy paste these elements in PowerPoint. This is really helpful. This makes it so easy. I always create one default. I put it right at the top and then I just copy paste it. We talked about it, default diagram structure. You don't want to think. You want to have the same structure every single time. And draw dirty as your solution and clean up later. Take the time. You only have a limited amount of time you're very, you can actually focus. 
take it to get as fast as possible with your solutioning. Cleaning up is for later. Don't focus on cleaning up while you solution. Do this afterwards. This time, uh, this way you get your solution out fast. It might be dirty. If you run out of time, at least you have a solution. And I spend, mention this often. We need to keep a soft eye. Way too often, I become like too focused. I overthink requirements. Read the requirement for what it is. This takes a lot of practice, the soft eye concept. Read it for what it is. Don't make up requirements. Stop thinking about your project work from last week. Stop thinking about the project you have to do next week. Stop thinking about all the complex stuff which can happen. Take the requirement and read it for what it is. And you only have about one minute per requirement. This should not happen too often, but if you can't figure something out after 30 seconds, stop. If you waste five minutes on one requirement, you, you can't solve four other requirements. You rather have one requirement not done than five requirements. And this comes to the next solve one line by line. Don't overcomplicate it, assume defaults, maybe change later. If you think right now it's an opportunity, don't scroll randomly through the document and check if it's really an opportunity. Put it in as an opportunity for now. If you realize later it's actually not an opportunity, but you want to use sales order, change it later. Just solve. The same goes for simplify assumptions. If you think it can be an opportunity, if you have the following assumptions, I mean, don't cheat yourself out, but you know what I mean. Simplify. And the same is don't solve what's not a score. This happens so often. Sim find the simplest solution which you can get somehow. This is all together the soft eye concept. And it's if you practice a lot, you become better and better with reading for keywords. It's not every word in the scenario has its meaning. Don't take me wrong there. But you learn to ignore kind of clutter. Sometimes um, two sentences say the same thing. Sometimes only three or four words from a sentence are important. Practice to ignore the clutter and read for keywords. And this is where proper highlighting comes into place. The better you become with highlighting, the better you become with solutioning. And this is already the practice part. You have to do a lot of mock exams, absolutely. But you can practice what I, a lot of it outside of mocks individually. Draw your default data model, sales cloud, service cloud, um, field service lightning, CPQ. Draw your default system landscape over and over and over again. Create PowerPoint slide. It's really boring, but I did it for so often. Open my PowerPoint, create the slides, delete the PowerPoint. Open my PowerPoint, create the slides, delete the PowerPoint. Do this, do it for half an hour, an hour. You become so much faster. Practice adding how to add notes to the work document to make them beautiful. Practice the governance and the CICD part. I can't stress that enough. If you fail governance and CICD, I'm personally disappointed. It's something you can really practice and practice highlighting. This is a really important tool. I think this is what I, one of the most important things I learned in SEPS um, coaching, CTA coaching was how to proper highlight. And with some general tips, I wanna then slowly go come to the end. Never stop solutioning. Solve one line after another. This is, I can't stress this enough. Don't focus, don't cramp, don't stop. Just go on, always go on. This, go, and practice. Practice, 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 practice. I would say at least 30 mocks are recommended if you go for the review board. If you do maybe 10 to 20 mocks, it will be really tough. Of course, maybe you're a genius, maybe you're Lawrence, but I would recommend more than 35 mocks. A lot of sport, a lot of meditation. You have to be super fit and at the same time relaxed. There's nothing which helps more than sport and meditation there, which comes into play with the relax and apply the soft eye concept. And the last one is, you only have to be in time exactly once for your review board when you pass. So I personally only solved my scenarios in three and a half hours exactly once on the day of my review board. I got closer and closer every time I did. And at the end, I was like at three hours and um, 40 minutes. So I was still 10 minutes over. But at the day of the review board, adrenaline kicks in. You're so much better, so much faster. It's the same with sport. You know, something kicks in. So don't focus, don't stress too much if you don't do it in the three and a half hours or three hours, whatever applies for you. 
right at the beginning. Just make sure you get closer and closer and closer. And with that, I want to close up again and say, this is an advanced topic, but be a Salesforce nerd, have fun. And with that, thank you very much for today's presentation. Thanks a lot. Um, I wish you all the best and let me know how it's going. Bye.